All right, good morning everybody. Welcome back to Harvest Moon Farm. Uh, I think I'm on my last day of holiday treat making. Um, so the, what I'm gonna make today are some peanut butter Cheez-Its. I don't really know what they're called. Um, that's what we always call them. So I just need um, a box of Cheez-Its. I have the store brand here, it really doesn't matter. And some peanut butter. I'm actually going to sit down because this is a super simple recipe, but it can be really tedious. So I've got this great big um, decorator bag, and I have it just with no tip, just the end is cut off of it. All right, so I'm just going to fill this up with peanut butter. And I tried to fill this pretty full the first time because, I don't know about you guys, but whenever I have to refill... A decorator bag I always make a terrible mess if you guys watched me make those meringue cookies you know how much I struggle with that so if anybody has any tips feel free to drop them down in the comments I really appreciate it all right so we've got, we've got our peanut butter here and I'm just gonna squeeze it down to the end of the bag so that it's ready to squeeze out. Now what I'm gonna do is take my cheese or my cheese crackers, whatever you got. And I tend to just use a cookie sheet just because it's easier to, that way they're not like running all over the counter for you. I'm just gonna pour some of these out of my tray. And then I'm going to take them and just line them up and I try to line them where the top is actually facing up so that the flatter side is on the bottom. It's a pretty subtle difference, but, and it really doesn't, I mean, it'll work either way. I just know that I do a better job with them if I lay them out like this. So I'm gonna lay all these out. And I just set the broken ones to the side. If there's just a little crumb off of the corner, that doesn't matter, but if they're little half pieces or just crumbs, I just pull them off to the side. Okay, and you don't have to fill up the whole tray, just do however many you've done. And now what I'm gonna do is drop a cracker. So I'm gonna take this cracker and I'm just going to squeeze just a little dollop of peanut butter on there. So kind of like that. And I just go through my tray and put peanut butter on all of these and then I'll go through and top them. So we're making like the little cheese peanut butter sandwiches basically. And this is why I said that this is tedious. I mean, it's super simple, but by the time you're done, your hand is probably gonna hurt depending on how many you do. My hand already hurts from everything else I've done. Plus I'm old, so all this squeezing of these these decorator bags um, kind of makes my hand cramp after a while. And I've tried just leaving them lay on the tray and just, you know, go from one to the next, but it tends to pick the cracker up with the decorator tip peanut butter when you do it like that. So I usually just, um, just pick them up. It tends to be easier for me. And I usually make quite a lot of these because all of my kids love them, my husband loves them, um, my best friend loves them, so I always make some for her. Um, when we worked together a few years ago, well, we worked together until last year, um, and at Christmas time I would take in a tray of goodies for our whole department, but I would take in a special bag of these just for her so that she could eat them all. So once you have all of your crackers um, topped with peanut butter, then you just go and take take crackers and just top them so that you've got the little sandwiches and then I usually try to turn them top down so that both sides are the flatter side and it doesn't it doesn't make that much of a difference I just it seems to work better for me when they're done because what we're going to do after we have all of these ready is we're going to melt some almond bark and then we're going to dip these in almond bark and I dip some in just the regular oh, 
my goats are running around like psychos. They're babies, so they're having a good time out there. Um, I usually dip some in just the regular chocolate and then some in the white chocolate. So I am just going to keep going along here like this, putting peanut butter on these and topping them so I'm making little sandwiches. And then when I've got everything done and I'm ready to start dipping them in the chocolate, then I'll be back and we will go through that together. Okay, so <clears throat> I've gone through both boxes. And one thing I forgot to mention that as you work this and the peanut butter gets warm from your hands, it makes it a lot easier to squeeze and it takes some of that pressure off your hand and your wrist. <laughs> your wrist. As I got down to the end of this last bag, I just kind of started counting them out so that I didn't have too many that already had peanut butter on that I wasn't able to top. So I've just got a few left. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish putting, putting the peanut butter on those. And when I'm done with those, then we'll go ahead and start melting our um, almond bar and getting ready to dip our little cookies. So my daughter, my oldest daughter, um, she made some of these for, she made a cookie basket for us one Christmas. I know it's been a few years, and she had made some of these and of course we all loved them and so we asked her you know where she found the recipe and she said it was just on the almond bark whoops it was just on the some almond bark package that she had and so she tried them and of course they were amazing so everybody loved them so much so i make them every christmas now um and it one year i tried making them with the I don't even know if they still make them. The Cheez-It Big, um, they were maybe like three times the size of a regular Cheez-It. And so it was easier because you had less, oh, gosh darn it, I keep dumping these over. You had less to top with peanut butter, but for some reason they just weren't the same. They didn't, I don't know, they tasted the same of course, but they just weren't the same as that one little bite cookie like these are. I don't know, maybe it was a psychological thing, but I went back to the regular size um, Cheez-Its, so. And amazingly, I think the peanut butter that I put in this bag initially is going to be almost the perfect amount. I might have a little bit left, and that's fine. Okay, so I do have just a little bit of peanut butter left. So I'm gonna go ahead and top these last ones, get them on my tray, and then I will get out the almond bark. All right, so those two family-sized boxes of Cheez-Its made these three trays of the little cookies. All right, so I've got a glass bowl here, and I've got a couple of partial packages of the um, almond bark, and I'm gonna start with the white. And I try to drop it on the floor. I try to break it into pieces before I um, start melting it. And I do usually add just a little spoon of um, vegetable shortening. Just add that in there. It helps it melt a little bit smoother. And then it's not quite so thick. You don't want it to be too thin because then it doesn't cover the cookies really well. So I'm gonna start melting this right now. Okay, so while that's melting, I am just gonna pull out a big sheet of aluminum foil. And I'm just going to lay this here on my counter as I dip these in the melted chocolate and um, take them out, I'm gonna just lay them on this foil to um, harden back up again. Okay, so I've got my very hot bowl. And what I normally do is I drop about 
five of these little cookies in at a time. And then I have these little tongs here. And I just roll those around in the melted almond bark until the cookie's covered. And then I lay it out on my foil. Okay. So now I'm just going to drop five more in there. I'm just going to keep going until I've finished one full tray and about half of that third tray with the white almond bark. And then I'll switch to the chocolate and I'll do the rest. So I got all of the white cookies done. Got all of the chocolate ones done. I do have a little bit of chocolate melted left. So what I'm going to do is just kind of go through here and just spoon a little bit more on some of these cookies. You can kind of look and see if there's any that maybe didn't have as thick of a, ow, the bowl's still hot on the bottom, didn't have maybe as thick of a coating on the top. Or just pick a few, it doesn't really matter. And you don't need to do this, I just do it because I don't like to waste this chocolate. And now what I do, and this is purely for decoration, I did finally find some of these green candy melts. So I've just got a little bit here in this um, Pyrex dish. I'm going to melt this and then I'm just going to kind of drizzle it over the white cookies. And then I'm going to melt some of the red candy melts and drizzle them over the chocolate. Okay, so now I'm just going to take my knife. So this is, I put some um, shortening in this. So this is pretty runny. I'm just going to take my knife. Oh, and I don't know if you can see that. Just going to take my knife with the green candy melt on it. And I'm just going to kind of wave it over these white cookies. And I just kind of fling it around. There's nothing special that you really need to do. Just whatever you think looks good usually just try to make sure I've got a little bit on each one of the cookies. All right, now I'm gonna do the same things for the chocolate ones, but I'm gonna use the red candy melts. All right, so here is the red candy melts, and I'm just gonna drizzle same thing over the chocolate ones. All right, so, <clears throat> I've got all of the peanut butter Cheez-Its, whatever they're called, they're all done. So what I'm gonna do now is just wait until all of the almond bark and the candy melts, wait till it's all hardened again and they're all set. And then I'm just gonna put them in Ziploc baggies until I'm ready to make the, the kids as Christmas trays. I thought that I was going to also get the sugar cookies frosted today, but it's dinner time and I'm tired, so I'm going to do those tomorrow. Um, but I am going to take a nice bite of one of these and see how they are. Today we are going to make some pumpkin rolls. So I'm going to get started with those right now. First thing we're going to do is preheat our oven to 375. So I am going to put my dry ingredients together first. And the instructions say to use a jelly roll pan that is 15 by 10. Um, what I have are pans that are 13 by 9. So I did some calculations and if I use three times the Yes, if I use three times the recipe, but divide it between four pans, that is about the same ratio. So that's what I'm gonna do. So our dry ingredients, we need a cup and a half of flour. A teaspoon and a half of baking powder, one and a half teaspoons of baking soda, a 
one and a half teaspoons of cinnamon and one and a half teaspoons of cloves. And we need three quarters of a teaspoon of salt. And then we're just gonna stir this all together. So then in our mixer, we're gonna start with three, three large eggs for each recipe. So I need nine eggs. And I've got my eggs that I had previously frozen here that I mixed up and frozen. And I had them divided into three eggs per bag. So I need three of these bags. So that'll make my nine eggs. Whoops, oh gross, dropped it in my bowl. All right, so there's nine eggs. To our eggs, we're going to add three cups of sugar and two cups of canned pumpkin. Now I have um, my own pumpkin that I had roasted and processed a while back, so that's what I'm going to use. All right, so we're going to mix up our sugar and pumpkin mixture and egg. Okay, and now I'm going to add my dry ingredients to this mixture. And we're going to mix that up. All right, so our batter for our cakes is all mixed up. So now I've got, I'm going to put four pans out here. And I'm going to put a sheet of parchment paper on each one and I'm going to spray these really well with some um, vegetable spray. I have butter flavored because that's what I've got but you can use regular vegetable spray. It doesn't have to be the butter flavor. Now this is kind of where I'm experimenting a little bit because I'm trying to figure out how how to divide this recipe up exactly to make it work for my size pans. So I'm just going to set my beater on this paper plate so that it doesn't get all over my counter. Give this a stir and make sure that I don't have anything that's not totally mixed in. And then for this first batch I'm going to measure it out so I can kind of figure out how many cups goes in each one. So it looks like about a cup and three quarters is what each one of these pans needs. Now on each one of my pans, I'm just gonna spread this out and make sure that my mixture goes all the way to the edges of my pan. Okay, so even though I've got four pans ready, I'm just gonna bake one at a time because as they come out of the oven, we're gonna dump them onto a tea towel covered with powdered sugar. And it's, I've tried doing two at a time before and it's too difficult. So I'm just gonna cook one at a time. So I'm gonna put one in the oven and we wanna bake it 13 to 15 minutes. I'm gonna wipe up where I spilled this cake batter. Nope. And I'm gonna just put all three of these out here to be ready to go. So now what I'm gonna do, while that first one is cooking, I'm gonna lay a towel out here. And I have these, um, I don't know what these towels are called. Anyway, I'm gonna lay these out here, fold it in half because it's too big for the cake. And I've got my powdered sugar and I'm going to put a bunch of it into my um, oh my gosh I can't think what this is called my sifter Whew. I'm gonna put a bunch in my sifter and what we're gonna do is just cover this well with powdered sugar and it does need to be fairly thick because this is what will keep your cake from sticking to the uh, 
um, sticking to the towel when it comes out of the oven. And so I'm actually going to make 12 times this recipe. So I'm gonna make 12 rolls. That way I can give them to my kids, to my in-laws, to my dad, you know. All right, so this first cake, oh, this first one is done and it smells amazing. So I'm gonna just set that down and I'm gonna put the next one in the oven. Okay, so now what you wanna do is you wanna take this pan, gotta get your pot holders just right, and you're gonna flip it out onto this towel that's covered with powdered sugar, just like that. Uh-oh, there we go. And you're gonna peel, you're gonna peel your paper off. And then you want to roll this while it's still hot. So just roll your towel over and just roll this up into a roll just like that. So now it looks like this. And I'm just gonna set this over here on a cooling rack. We're gonna leave it this way until it's completely cool. After all of our cakes are done, we'll mix up our filling. And then when these are cool, we'll go ahead and fill them all. So now we'll lay out our towel for our next one. And put powdered sugar on it. And I did have two additional pans that were that size. So I went ahead and prepped those. So when the pan that's in the oven comes out and I've dumped the cake out, then I can go ahead and pour this batch out into those four pans. And then I'm gonna go ahead and mix up my dry ingredients for the next batch. And once you kind of get in a groove of this whole process, whether you're doing like me and doing multiple batches at a time, or whether you're just mixing one at a time, which is what I've done in the past, once you get in a groove, most of your time is spent just waiting on the ones that are in the oven. All right, so we've got the last few um, rolls getting ready to go into the oven. We've got two in the oven, we've got two left. So we're gonna go ahead and mix up our filling. So I'm gonna do just six at a time. I need 36 tablespoons of butter. What's the matter, Mommy? No. No? Who's she saying no to, me? What? So we put in 36 tablespoons of butter, and then we need six packages of cream cheese, and all of this stuff is, has been sitting out, so it's at room temperature. And where's my, here it is. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and mix up this butter oh, and cream cheese before I add in the powdered sugar or vanilla. Well, I might put the vanilla in. So I need six teaspoons of vanilla. So I'm gonna start that mixing so that we can get that butter and cream cheese creamed up really well before I add the powdered sugar. So you wanna make sure that's mixed up really well so that you don't have any clumps of cream cheese or clumps of butter, because that, that will be clumpy then in your filling. Um, so now I'm gonna add six cups of powdered sugar. So I've got my filling all mixed. So now I'm gonna start with the rolls that are cool. And what you wanna do is unroll it very gently and put your filling inside here and you want to stay about a half an inch or so away from the edges of the roll because it's going to squish out when you um when you roll it back up and my rolls are a little smaller than they would be if you use the 10 by 15 pan that's okay okay so now you want to start with the the part that was rolled in the middle and you want to just roll it back up Oops, and this one crashed. And then I've got some foil sheets that, that I already tore off here. And I'm going to put this on my sheet. And I'm just gonna roll it like this. Fold this under. And just fold up the ends. So now I've got a roll like this. 
and I'm just going to keep rolling those until I, er, I'm just going to keep unrolling and filling until I've got all of them filled. If I run out of filling, then I will make some more. Now these towels that I've used, I get a sink full of hot soapy water and just throw those in there so you can get most of the powdered sugar and cake crumbs out before you wash them. Okay, so I've got all these done. I ended up with 16 because I 12 times the recipe, but I forgot that every three recipes made four cakes. So I ended up with 16. So I've got one cut here. They came out really nicely. So my husband and I are gonna take a little taste of this one later. All right, so we are gonna get to work on the frosting for our sugar cookies. So I'm just using the Wilton um, Royal Icing recipe. And so for that we need four cups of powdered sugar. Make sure by measuring cups are dry because we just took them out of the dishwasher. Okay, so four cups of powdered sugar. And I'm just gonna dump it here in my kitchen. And I definitely need an apron before I go further. Okay, that's better. So I've got two cups in there. Go ahead and add two more. Then we're going to add three tablespoons of meringue powder. And your meringue powder is what is going to allow this frosting to dry hard so that you're, you're not spreading like a soft, like a cake frosting. This will be a harder frosting. And then we want five tablespoons of warm water. Okay, so this is just a little warmer than room temperature, so I'm gonna add five tablespoons to my mixer. We wanna mix this on low speed, and this is gonna take quite a while, so we wanna let it run about seven to 10 minutes. So I'm just gonna turn that on and let that run, and while it's running, I'm gonna go ahead and get all of my other supplies ready. Okay, so I've got my my royal icing here. I've had it mixing for about, oh, about eight minutes. And I did have to add a little more water. You just need to check the consistency. I probably added more flour, well, not flour. I probably add more powdered sugar than exactly four cups. Um, <clears throat> but you will just want to check the consistency and add water just a teaspoon or so at a time because it'll be real easy to make it too thin. And it's gonna seem pretty thick when you are done with it here. So now I'm going to pull some out to color for the, to start working on the cookies. I usually do the trees first because they're a little easier. At least the way I do them, they're it's easier. So I've got some little just disposable decorator bags and I've got the little, I don't know what this thing is called, the piece that goes, you've got a piece that goes inside your bag and then the little coupler that goes over the top so you can change the tips if you want. So when I do these, I do wanna use that. So I just push one down in my bag to kind of see where I need to, how far up I need to cut on the tip of that bag. Push it down and then I am using a tip that's flat on one side and um, serrated on the other. If you can even tell in this. So that's what I use to make my trees. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that tip on, put that tip on my bag and then screw the little coupler over the top. That way if I want to use, I'm going to make some of this green, that's why if I want to use green on another cookie or I want to use a different tip on it, I can exchange it without having to get a whole new bag. So I've got a separate bowl here. I'm going to pull out, let's see, I'm not sure how much I'm going to need. So I'm going to pull out about that much, maybe two thirds of a cup, maybe a little more, I don't know. Um, and then for this, for this batch that I'm making green, 
I've got um, this icing paste. It's a Wilton product. You can buy it at a lot of grocery stores or Walmart. I probably got this from Hobby Lobby or Michaels. But this one is called Juniper Green. And I'm just going to take my butter knife and just scoop out a little bit and just slowly stir it into my um, royal icing here that I've got in this bowl. And you want to make sure it's mixed in well so that your frosting is all solid. I mean, unless you want the frosting to be um, kind of streaky because that that can be used for special effects. It looks really pretty, but I want mine to be a solid green. And of course, it doesn't look like I put enough in. So I'm gonna get another knife, since this one already has frosting on it, and I'm gonna scoop out a little more. And then I'm gonna stir that in. And you just wanna add a little bit at a time until it gets to the color that you want. You just want to make sure that you've got all that mixed in so you don't want any big blobs of food coloring to come out because this gel, I think I said paste, but it's a gel. This gel food coloring does not taste very good if you get it all by itself. You don't taste it in the frosting, obviously, but. Okay, so. I'm going to smear just a little bit on this one cookie. Okay, I just wanted to see if that was the kind of the consistency that I wanted. It's hard to tell sometimes. All right, so I'm going to use my spatula. I'm going to try and get all the, actually, you know what, I'm just going to start with a fresh one. So I've got a fresh spatula so I don't end up with accidentally adding white to this. And I'm going to scoop it out of this bowl. And put it in my decorator bag here. And I am never sure how much frosting I need for the number of cookies I have. Sometimes I end up with way too much. Sometimes I have to make more. I never know. So. For me, it's kind of a trial and error. I'm gonna push this frosting down. Try not to squeeze any out the top. So now I'm gonna hold this so that the serrated edge is at the top. So my frosting was actually too thick, so I had to squeeze it back out and add a little bit more water to it, which is what I'm doing here, so that it is gonna be able to pipe out a little easier. Okay, that is much better. I'm going to start over. Put my little tip piece in here. Put the tip back on and put the coupler back on. And now I'm going to scoop this thinned icing out and put it back in this new bag. And I am in no way an expert when it comes to this sugar cookie frosting. I do what works for me and I think they turn out pretty. And So I do have a little bit of that thicker frosting that's still in the bottom of the tip, but I'm going to, okay. So I'm gonna start with the serrated edge at the top. There we go, that is way better. So I just do kind of a back and forth motion across the tree going up into where the branches would be. So it looks like this. So it looks like that. And I'm just gonna set these as I do them out here to dry and then I'll add um, when I do the other colors, I'll add like little dots to look like um, ornaments. So 
I'm going to go ahead and do all the trees this way. And I might have to make more frost, or I might have to color more frosting for this. And if I do, that's fine. I probably needed bags that were a little bit bigger. I didn't realize these were this small when I bought them. And I don't really worry if I have some little bare spots on my cookie. Um, they end up looking more like trees that way, I think. Um, and like I said, I like them. I'm happy with them. So I wish I had the skills to do some of these ladies or, or men, I guess. Some of these people who have these beautiful, perfect sugar cookies. Mine do not like look like that. But it's okay. I'm definitely going to need more frosting. But just a little bit, which is kind of frustrating. One thing I did forget to say is the frosting that you're not using, because I forgot to do this, um, you want to keep it covered with, if you've got a lid for your bowl, or cover it with some plastic wrap, because it will dry out really quickly. All right. Keep that like, I've got that bowl covered with plastic, so it'll help keep that moisture in. All right, so I put a little bit more frosting in my bowl. Now I need to add some food coloring to this bunch and stir it in and see if I can make it the same color or close to the same color. And I do need to add a little dribble of water to this. Now here's the hard part. Is adding frosting to this already used bag. This is where bigger bags might have helped a little bit. But I'll know for next time that I need to get some bigger bags. You know when you add frosting to a bag, you're gonna get that little splurt. Either, either need to squeeze this out or just be prepared for it. And because I think I've got just about the right amount, I'm just gonna kind of be prepared for it and then fix whatever crazy thing it does like that. So now I can push this frosting down a little better. All right, <clears throat> so there's all my trees. And I do have just a little bit left. And I'm gonna put this in a baggie in case I decide to use any of it on these other cookies. So I'm just gonna fold that over, stick it in a Ziploc baggie so that it will not harden up on me. Now I need to wash off all my utensils that I've used so I can move to the next color. All right, so now I'm gonna make some frosting that is red. Cover up the rest of this. And for my red food coloring, I have some that's called Christmas Red. And for those of you who don't know, if you want a true red in your frosting, you need to use this gel coloring. If you use the little liquid, the little drops, you're never going to get a really good red. And the more you try, the more it's going to have sort of a weird flavor. So while I'm stirring that, I am going to go ahead and add in a little bit of water. Maybe I should have gotten a bigger bowl for this red since I'm making more of it. I just want to make sure that I get it mixed well, get the water mixed in, get the food coloring mixed in, and then I might add a little more because it's a little bit pink at the moment. For this one, I'm just going to put in an open piping tip, get in a cup to hold my bag and see if that helps me a little bit. All right, so I'm going to use the clean one to put this in my bag so I don't inadvertently end up with some white streaks in it. All right. So I'm going to work on the little Santa hats next. And what I'm gonna do is just draw a triangle for the top of the hat, kind of following the curve around the, the top. And then I filled that in, and I'm just gonna smooth it with my knife. And I know that I could thin this frosting out more and flood it, but I didn't think of that. I wasn't thinking of that when I put it in my bag. So. I'm just going to do it like that and that looks fine. And then um, I'm going to take white with a star tip and I'm going to pipe the, um, the white pom-pom at the top of the cookie and then I'm going to put white across the ends. So I decided I am going to go ahead and just outline these and then thin some out so that I can 
um, flood these. So I'm adding a little bit more water to this red. And I'm going to use a new bag only because it's I struggle so much getting the frosting back in there. The one I had was probably fine, but I am not talented enough to get that extra frosting in there. All right, oh my gosh, I have so many utensils out here now. All right, so I'm gonna take one of my cookies where I just did the outline, and I'm just going to fill it with this thinned out frosting, and it will kind of smooth out. Because it's so runny, it'll kind of smooth out. I'm just using the tip to kind of push that frosting to the edge of the border that I put that I piped on earlier so that it fills in the whole cookie or the whole you know that whole area so I'm going to remove this tip from here and I'm going to go ahead and put this red in a Ziploc baggie in case I want to use it for something but I will need that tip um, to do some of my other cookies all right so now I'm going to take the white that I thickened back up and I'm going to pipe the little pom-pom on there and then just pipe a little back and forth little edging for the hat. Okay, so one recipe of the frosting mix did the trees and the Santa hats. So now I need to make up another batch so I can do my little mittens and my stars, which a couple of my little, or I keep saying stars, they're ornaments. Um, a couple of them, the edges broke off, so we won't have as many of those, but I'm gonna go ahead and clean some of this stuff up and then mix up another batch of frosting and we'll get working on the next cookies. Okay, I've got my second batch of frosting made and just going to get it all off the beater here so I can start coloring it. The next thing we're going to frost is the little mittens and I'm going to make those purple. So I've got just a violet color. I'm going to put just a little bit of this in my bag. I talk to myself a lot if you guys haven't noticed. All right, so on my little mittens, I am just going to outline the little mitten part like that because I'm going to put white, um, like a white cuff at the bottom of that like I did with the um, hats. All right, so since I have a little bit left of this stiffer purple, I'm going to go ahead <clears throat> and use that to add some decorations on my trees. So I'm just gonna take each one and just put some little balls just periodically on the tree to look like ornaments. And then I'll do the same with the red, <clears throat> excuse me, the red when, when I'm all done here. The, I have some red left over. And I try to do these randomly. Sometimes they end up all looking the same, but. So I'm gonna thin this purple out now a little bit more. All right, two more. Okie doke. There is the last purple for the mittens. Got a little bit left, so I'm going to put it in a baggie like the others. And I'm going to go ahead and take the red and put some red ornaments on my little trees. <laughs> Somehow I rubbed red frosting along the edge of my counter here. I'm so talented. All right, so I'm gonna put this red, the little bit that's left, back in the bag. Put this stuff in the sink to rinse off here in a minute. Oh, goodness, look what I did. How did I do that? <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and add a little more white to, um, the bag I've got here with the star tip. All right, cover this back up. Pipe the little edges on the mittens. And actually, I'm going to squeeze them out on this broken cookie until 
it does that. And these I'm just squeezing some little stars out on here. And you know, you can do whatever you want to do, whatever you think looks cute. It really doesn't matter. I mean, obviously I am not a professional and I don't <laughs> I don't claim to be, I don't need to be. These are for my family and friends, so they'll be happy with them, even though they're not perfect. Do any of you guys remember back in the 80s? I'm dating myself here. Back in the early 80s, um, mid 80s, the cakes that you, you frosted using all the little tiny stars. Ugh. I used to love those, even though my hand hurt so bad when I was done. I made one for one of my little sisters when I was in high school. Um, it was, it was a, I think it was a Care Bear. And those always looked so cute, but man, they were a lot of work. Oops. I missed the right way. That's not the color I wanted. I had a, a royal blue and I wanted to do more of a, like a powder blue. So let me look. So I wanted to do more of this. Um, this is called sky blue. This is more the color I was looking for. All right, so get a blob of frosting out here. And go ahead, there's just a little bit left. I'm gonna go ahead and cover that up. I'm gonna go ahead and squeeze a few drops of this blue in here. And I want it to stay a light blue, so I don't wanna use too much. Uh-oh, I might have used too much already. Oh, darn, I think I did. I think it's going to be okay. All right. And again, I'm just going to put enough in here that I think it'll be what I need for um, doing the edging on these cookies. And then I'll thin the rest of it for the flooding. Okay. So these are the little ornament shapes. Oh shoot, I broke this last one. I'm gonna use a little bit of this leftover blue to um, do my trees. All right, so I'm gonna thin out the rest of this blue frosting and put it back in the bag, or put it in the bag. Okay, so I've got all of those um, frosted. And I'm just gonna pour some of this in my hand because I don't want to get too much on there. And I kind of want to test one first and see, oh, that looks pretty. Okay, I like that. So I'm just gonna sprinkle this over these cookies. I'm gonna clean a little bit of this stuff up and then we will finish up. All right, so what I'm gonna do with this a little bit of white frosting that I have left. I'm gonna just put it in this little Pyrex dish. I have a lid for this. So I'm gonna scrape out everything that's not hardened already. I'm gonna put the lid on it. And then this frosting and these bags that I have with a little bit left, I'm gonna stick them in the refrigerator. And then if I make any more cookies in the next week or so, I'll have this frosting already made and I can use it. All right, so there are all my cookies. I've got trees, hats, mittens, and these little snowflakes, ornaments, whatever these are. They might be snowflakes, I don't know. Anyway, these little blue cookies. I've got these all frosted, all done. And now I have finished. This was the last recipe that I had to complete. And so now tomorrow I'll be able to, once these are all dry, I'll be able to start packaging up my cookies for my kids and some of the neighbors and, and some friends that I'm giving them to. So I just want to say thank you all very much for sticking with me throughout this whole process, especially if you've watched all of these videos. I really appreciate it. Um, and if you have any questions, be, feel free to pop them down in the comments. Um, otherwise, have a Merry Christmas, and I will see you guys on the next video. Thank you.